and it has begun. Welcome everyone, Stand Up Paddlers, another paddling community and water lover lovers. Um, thrilled to be here. My name is Kristen Thomas. Sup Connect lets me do these interviews every Thursday. It's usually at 1 p.m. Pacific time, but we're really expanding and we're going to be talking to someone in England and someone in Australia. So sometimes it's 4 p.m. Pacific time to, to accommodate. We also have a Facebook group, Sup Connect Live, that follows up because in this format we are, can't share pictures or videos or uh, post the links, so um, that's a great place to join in. We immediately are recorded onto IGTV and then put onto Sup Connect's uh, YouTube also. So if you haven't seen all of our broadcasts, I believe we're up to about 15. They are recorded and available, and if one of your friends missed the live, we'd love them to um, catch up and, and join us in that way. So thanks again, SubConnect, and excited to get started. Um, we're about to have somebody with a different water background than we've ever had. Um, she's a paddler and a racer, but she also works for a company that makes a really interesting product that I'm excited to talk about. So um, I'm going to look here and see if I can find Nicole Stimson from Chesapeake Lightcraft. She um, also has her own paddle company. She is from Annapolis, Maryland. And, sorry, there we go. Let's see if we can find her. There she is, yay. And has done a lot of neat races, including the sea paddle around Manhattan, which is one I just think is spectacular. She has a real special reason she did that. So let's welcome Nicole. And um, she actually happens to be at work, so I'm kind of excited. I think she might be able to um, even show us. Cancel. No, I don't want to cancel. <laughs> that usually hasn't come up before. Hope everyone's doing well. We're in such strange times, and um, I'm in California where we're returning to some lockdown, but lucky to still have access to the water. So my sanity is getting out on the water, um, but otherwise trying to be very careful and um, thoughtful and wear my mask and all that other good stuff. So oars and paddles, Nicole, it should have a request. Um, it looks like you're there. And you should be able to um, click on that and join us. Hopefully, thank you for those of us. Let's see, who have we got here? Oh, Scotland. I love that people from all over the world, um, SubConnect is such an awesome format and um, really has connected water people all over the place. Let's see, it says there's someone there. Let's try again. Let's see if we can get you on. I did find you there right at the top, Nicole. There she is, yay! Fantastic. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Absolutely. Wonderful. All right. So we have a Great. good good connection and we'll we'll hope that that will continue. Well, let's jump right into it. Um you have an interesting water background, different than I think anybody that I've talked to. Um but also we also love to hear um how you got started in stand up paddling. What what really hooked you? I think you mentioned it was on a vacation. So two yeah. things I'd love in a nutshell. Uh 2013, uh I was on vacation in Charleston and family went kayaking and then when we came in from kayaking there were some boards I was like yeah let's go hop on a board and, and check it out and that was my first time just standing up and um it was such a fun experience because you're paddling down this canal and dolphin comes by and you're like really come on <laughs> pinch me this is yeah. real <laughs> yeah so then when we got home we just started you know renting boards and getting out here in the Annapolis area and then finally um bought two boards and um started going out as a family but then I'm a little competitive, so I was <laughs> like, let's just go, let's go paddle. And so I ended up just paddling on my own. And then in 2016, I joined a local race league and the rest is history. Very so, fun. It does yeah. seem like Annapolis, Maryland, I know of a, quite a few different businesses and uh, you have a lot of water there, mm -hmm. bay, bay mostly? Mostly bay, mostly, lots of yeah. rivers. We have mm -hmm. more shoreline than California, actually. That is, isn't that wild? That's our little fun fact. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's funny that California is thought of as such a water place, but Southern mm -hmm. California, we have the Pacific Ocean, but as you mentioned, not as much of that interesting shoreline. It is fairly mm -hmm. straight with little harbors and bays, and we don't have a lot of rivers and lakes, reservoirs, yeah. is what, you know, from water we brought in. And then you also have a water background in a different mm -hmm. type of paddling. 
Yeah. So when, um, actually I was a swimmer too, growing up ah. like you. And mm -hmm. then when I got to college, I picked up rowing and just fell in love with the sport. After I graduated, I ended up coaching rowing at the collegiate high school levels for 17 years. And most of my career was spent at the United States Naval Academy, um, as the women's assistant coach. So, um, you know, that's yeah. yeah, super, super fun. Um, I was ready for a change and that's when I pestered Chesapeake Lightcraft to hire me and that's where <laughs> I am now. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, let's mention what, so Chesapeake Lightcraft has been around for a while, I think. Mm -hmm. um, oh. So, but um, they have kits to actually make beautiful wood. There's two of them behind you mm -hmm. and you're yep. on one in the picture. Mm -hmm. um, different type of watercraft and I guess beyond watercraft, we, you can mention that one too, but um, Stand up paddle. I don't know that many people have thought that they could actually make their own board. Absolutely. Cool. So, in like in 2010, uh, Larry Froley, who, who you know from Gray yeah. Whale Paddle, mm -hmm. approached Chesapeake Lightcraft about um, a stand up paddle board kit. And um, there's two designs now. So, behind me is the uh, 14 foot and then the 12 foot six. So, with Larry's race background, he, he came up, you know, presented those two lengths. And that's why we mm -hmm. have those. And then we have two versions where you can make the deck out of cedar strips, or you could do, go with an all plywood board, um, and you could decorate it with fabric, um, or basically just kind of do whatever you want, which is super fun. Yeah, gorgeous. I love the cedar strips. Yeah. And do, are they a touring shape? If you can, you they are tilt yeah. up to the nose. You They're have a, much a touring shape. Yeah. The nose. Um, touring racing. Mm hmm. So yeah. I've I've raced on both boards actually, um, and then I've I've crossed over to carbon though. So, but I, I do get out on these boards quite a bit and they're, they're a lot of fun. Yeah. Sounds like it. So what does it take to build your own board? I'm not, I don't have those skills or do you need a lot of skills and tools to build? Them? That's, that's the beauty of it. You don't, um, ah. you no experience necessary, but you literally get a kit. So here at the shop, we have a CNC machine that precision cuts all of the plywood parts and you're sent a big flat packed box. Uh, and then, a manual, fiberglass, the resin, the hardener, um, wow. and the manual walks you through the whole process. So you, you could be a total novice and it's such a fun process. And I recently built my own 14 this past winter and, and finished it this spring. Oh, neat. And I used to take our boards all the time from the shop and go to race league and people would say, oh, did you build that? And I'd be like, no, but I worked for the company. <laughs> and now you can say you built and it. And now, yeah. yes, now that I finally built my own, I can say, yes, I did build that. And that's a super fun feeling. And I think it's um, something that our customers really enjoy. Absolutely. So can I ask, um, is it a lot more money? I mean, it, it's beautiful wood, so mm -hmm. um, cost-wise. I mean, there's a huge range in the price of boards. Mm -hmm. I mean, yep. huge, but... So yeah, our boards are around just over a thousand dollars. So pretty oh. much what you would spend on a, a brand new, you know, board, um, and then then you assemble it. But the the construction, you know, is, is just beautiful and it's unique and, and it's your own. And I think the fun thing is seeing the way people customize their boards, you know, yeah. from our customers. So yeah. you can do whatever you want. Really cool. Super fun. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So um, did you say it's hollow construction? What's on the it is? Yep. Inside? So on the inside, yeah. actually, I got out. Um, kind of the start of a board oh, and cool. it's all hollow. So basically this is the, the beginnings where you get the plywood, really thin plywood that can bend to the shape. And then mm -hmm. it has the frames on the inside, much like an aircraft wing. And that's what gives it its support. And then it's all hollow on the inside to help make it lightweight. Yeah. And I see that those have cutouts too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Cedar. It's interesting. We were talking wood last week with someone mm -hmm. there that makes paddles of mm. different woods mm -hmm. and they're in, in Oregon and using and local and you're on the other, in the other coast. Do you guys make paddles too? Or is that a, we, we don't, I don't know we, if that could be a kit. That'd be pretty hard. <laughs> we have a, we have a book on how to do it. Um, hmm. and that's, you know, a lot of our customers are DIYers. So they'll, they'll definitely delve into that. I'll bet you have a lot of that. Yeah. Actually, mm -hmm. that is a very reasonable price. I expect it to be, to be a lot more. And I would mm -hmm. say for most people in the racing world, they spend a lot more than that on their, race boards again there's a huge yeah. range so for a beautiful touring board like that i mm -hmm. mean if you're getting it you love the whole act i assume mm -hmm. of building it you know it's exactly. not like that's a negative that's a yeah. that's a positive that it's going to yeah. be like you said you have your board that you can say that you made mm -hmm. yeah definitely Very fun. and a lot of people they miss the end of the process the build they're like oh i kind of miss 
you know, now that it's done. So, but then they come back and, and get more. So there you go. Awesome. <laughs> Can I build it for somebody else? Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. What fun. Mm -hmm. Well, um, let's talk a little bit about you and racing. And, um, you know, I, as a, a fellow got hooked on racing and couldn't stop mm -hmm. person, um, one of the things you've done that I have never done is the Sea Paddle New York, which is a oh. very special race. So tell us yeah. about what um, your motivation was. Sure. So in um, 2018 was the first time, you know, I'd heard about Sea Paddle. And when someone told me about it, oh, it's this race around New York City. And I was like, that's crazy. There's no way I would do that. And then when I found out what Sea Paddle supports, I was like, okay, I have to do it now. Because Sea Paddle, um, SEA, the Surfers Environmental Alliance, they mm -hmm. support a lot of charities. And one of those charities is for autism. And when my son was a, um, at the age of two, he was diagnosed on the spectrum. And the amount of help and support that we got for my son, um, the least I could do is paddle around Manhattan, you know, and raise some money for, for a great cause. Um, so did so you my, do the whole thing or did you do mm -hmm. it as a relay? You did the whole thing. No, I did thing. the whole. Wow. So I did, my good friend. <laughs> Very impressed. <laughs> my good friend, Carlene uh, Burns from Montrefit, um, who started the race league that I'm, I'm a part of. Um, mm -hmm. It was last, you know, it was January of 2019. And I was like, I'm going to do it. Do you want to do it? And she's like, yeah, let's do it. So I think starting in like April, May of last year, every Tuesday morning, we got together, we'd paddle like six miles, you know, every week. We got in some long paddles and yeah, we got, got to New York City and it was crazy. It was probably some of the worst conditions I've ever paddled in. And um, good thing I got a tetanus shot beforehand because now yeah. I can say I've swam in. <laughs> In the Hudson or all yeah, three of those in the, yeah. in the, up, I swam in the East river. I fell in, in the Harlem and then finished off in the Hudson. So, yeah, I forget. Uh, there's but it's a, there's such a, a name race. of one place where the waters are coming together, where they said, yes, even without the hell, you know, Hellgate. Yes. Hellgate. Well, we were, we were is, so guess, funny because well everyone's freaking out about Hellgate and they're like, you're, you know, you got to watch the tide. You got to be careful. And we actually paddled through Hellgate without even noticing. And we got to one point. <laughs> And we, we said, where's Hellgate? Are we there yet? And they're like, yeah, yeah, you guys already paddled through it. You're fine. Oh so yeah. we got super lucky. But I've heard there's been years where it's really bad. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and as I remember that, that event is really, I think it's special on so many levels. You mentioned all the mm -hmm. different charities, but yeah. they make, when destination events make a whole, you know, weekend of it. And Absolutely. I know they, they used to, early on, I don't, think they were able to keep it going they had a white party and I thought wow Whoa. you're in New York City and you've gone yeah. around it on the outside and then yeah. to do sort of to me the other side of it which would be this like woo, I'm in a like was, social thing in New York yeah. City <laughs> it was very cool yeah seems um, like it would be an amazing day those like amazing contrasts <laughs> it, was, it was yeah we had a party on the boat a big which was kind of funny because you've been on the water all day and then it's like and then oh, you're back <laughs> <laughs> we're going to eat on this boat. Okay. Uh, but it was, it was really neat. And got, yeah. to, got to shower at Chelsea Piers and things like that. So that was pretty fun. Yeah. So, so is that, how long is that one? Is it? That one's 25. Mm -hmm. So when, you know, Chattajack has, has now come into the picture and I was like, what's six more miles? You know? <laughs> Absolutely. I am actually wearing my right. Chattajack shirt from 2018 when I That's did it. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. I'm, Again, we're in very strange times yeah. right now. So whether these things happen, we're, um, I'm actually training for long races more than I think I ever have because of the virtual race uh, situation. Oh, yeah. And we have a couple of Hawaiian races coming up, mm -hmm. Molokai to Oahu, um, where, where they're being kind. And That's we're awesome. doing 16, 16 miles instead of the 32, but you do it on your own wherever you live Yeah, because we aren't able to travel to those places. But Chattajack, on the other hand, and um, Carolina Cup still, mm -hmm. I think, are hoping to hold their mm -hmm. events. And I am hearing in certain places, uh, the Midwest Paddle League, I was just looking at my friend Doug's Facebook, and uh, they're, they're able to hold some events. Um, it is an interesting thing because we get, you know, kind of in this whole group of sports events. Mm -hmm. Well, sports events, when people think of them, they think of stadiums and thousands mm -hmm. of people and yeah. uh you know, uh, we are in a very different situation being on the water and naturally mm -hmm. social, so socially distanced because when you're paddling, you don't want to be exactly to someone you don't want to be get away to them. Yeah. So you yeah. need some space. So I think there are ways to do it. And sometimes mm -hmm. they might have to be reduced sizes, but I'm, I am hoping that, um, I mean, of course we want this all to subside yeah. and people to be healthy and have, you know, not have people dying. Mm -hmm. It's a very serious situation, yeah. but I hope we can find ways to do it in a, 
in a healthy way. So are those both races on your um Yes, they are. Hopeful yeah, list? I, yes. Yeah. They, I, I had signed up for um, Carolina Cup, and then it got postponed to November. Yeah. Um, so I only said, signed up for the six-miler. So that if, I, if it is a go after Chattajack, I'll be pretty psyched to just, you know, cruise around for six miles. Um, and then we're kind of, you know, making our own, you know, here in Annapolis. We have a really great community, and we're just kind of making our own fun. Again, like you said, being, so, you know, very safe, socially distancing, mm -hmm. you know, as we're launching. Um, but we have a really strong group of paddlers here that, that likes to get together and either do a little bit of racing or, you know, do a nice paddle. Um, like on yeah. Monday night, we went out to Baltimore, Baltimore light, um, which is kind Ooh. of at the mouth of the Magathy river where I train and we paddled around this lighthouse and came back, which was super fun. That sounds so, so cool. I love yeah. that. Like, so it's just little things like paddles. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we, um, fun. yeah, I think there will be more of that. And I hope people kind of see that as a way to um, bring community together mm -hmm. in a safe way to do exactly. maybe local, whether, like you said, race series or mm -hmm. just pat paddling together, um, kind of scheduled meetups type thing. Yeah. So I'm hoping people are finding ways to do that if that's what they like to do. Mm -hmm. Or, um, I mean, the piece of paddling on your own or with just one other person is also wonderful. So yeah. that's, that's, I'm um, kind of jealous. I didn't ask how old your kids are, but that you got your family into this because mine were a little bit older. One was in college, two in high school when I oh, okay. got the bug in 2010. So I never got them hooked. They were kind of in their own sports and everything already. They've all paddled, certainly. Oh, okay. But, um, it's not a huge part of their life. So are your kids still at home and do they still they are, paddle they're... some or? 11 and 13 and um during quarantine i would bring a couple of boats home from the shop and and kind of tell them to go out on the water and we'd go paddle um and then when i taught my 11 year old how to do a pivot turn or pop a wheelie he was like oh yeah <laughs> so then that was that sold him you gotta great. find again that hook exactly hook them in it might yep. be different for kids than for us exactly. for you perhaps it was that nature and family yeah. activity but uh for him, it was um, popping like, a wheelie. I look cool, yeah. <laughs> I haven't heard it called that. I like that, popping a wheelie. <laughs> yeah, I love that um, I see the younger people, especially, like, how long can you stall and oh, like, yeah. stand and how far back and how exactly. I can be at the board before you go over. <laughs> it's that time of year. Your water yeah. is probably warmer. Do you have Gulf Stream? Does that get as far up as Maryland? Yeah. No. So your water's not cold um, right now. No, it's like 80 degrees. It's like a bathtub right now. The it's water? It's gross. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So when I go to the Pacific, yeah, when I'm out west, I'm like, whoa, this water's freezing. Yes. It's, we yeah, almost it's always shock people here. who touch, touch the Pacific Ocean for the first time in Southern yeah. California, thinking it's such a water place. The water must be mm -hmm. like Florida or that jet stream that goes along the East Coast and yeah. brings the warmth up. But we don't have that. <laughs> It comes right from deep water, and we think it's it's in the 60s. We're all happy. Yeah, it's refreshing. <laughs> it is refreshing, though. Yeah. So <laughs> it's not too. It's not like you're going to get hypothermia falling no. in. So so that part is okay, definitely. Um, back to do you call it CLC or Chesapeake Light Craft? Yeah, CLC. Yeah, CLC is what we kind of refer to it. Um, yeah. Yeah. If people were interested in the kit, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. do they contact you directly? Are there certain mm -hmm. shops? Do they tend to be, I would think, more probably in the, the kayak outfitters who might so have already we, had a kit for a kayak or canoe? Yeah, we're actually, we're the only, we're the one, like, we're the one shop here in, in the country. Um, so we have a whole website that you can purchase kits from or you can call the shop and place an order. Um, and we cut them right here and then ship them out directly or people can pick them up. So, okay, so it is directly yeah. from you. That's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So. Again, yeah, I think I told you that Larry from Northern mm -hmm. California, 10 hours north, but he yeah. definitely does a good job as an ambassador for it. And uh, I had forgotten it was his idea <laughs> of bringing him south. Oop, I'm losing sound. I need to hold I still. I lost you there. You good? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bouncing around too much. Yeah. So, um, Back to, um, I'm just fascinated by the whole um, Annapolis, Maryland, that the idea that there's rivers coming in and bays and that the water's warm and that you have multiple <laughs> shops. Um, do, so you tend to uh, train on a river? Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. So I've, uh, I live in a neighborhood with water access to the Magathy River. And um, 
have a bunch of boards stored in a carport outside my house and um, husband keeps coming outside every day and he's like, do you need this board? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I need it. He's like, well, how about this one? Can I sell this one? I'm like, no, I need that one. So, <laughs> but I try to get out a few times a week, either mostly in the mornings uh, before work. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love, um, well, it's fun talking to another female that, that, there are a lot of females in stand-up paddleboarding. Mm-hmm. And um, I saw a funny meme of two women talking. And it would be the same in surfing, which has been kind of a guy mm-hmm. culture thing here. Um, I've seen memes like it. But it's, it's them laughing to each other. Like, and he asked me if, you know, about how many paddleboards I have. Ha, ha, you know, like I was going to get rid of any. Uh-uh. No, <laughs> no way. You need them. <laughs> we need them. Yeah. <laughs> well, besides... If, this doesn't keep you busy enough, having a family and, and racing. Yeah. Um, you also have your own business. And um, one of the, there's some great associations that do, um, again, we're a new and still figuring it out sport, mm-hmm. yeah. but um, Peace Supper, mm-hmm. right? You, yep. You're, yep. you have your training, your certification through them, and you yes. have your own business. Tell us a little bit about those. I do, those. yeah. So CLC uh, offered to get me certified to work with our customers uh, at various festivals and things like that. So I reached out to Larry and he got me hooked into the the PSUPA, Professional Stand-Up Paddlers Association. And in 2018, I got my flat level level, flat water level one certification. Um, And then shortly after that, I had some local rowers in the community ask me to to do some training plans. And then um, I would do some coaching on Santa Paddle for Mantra Fit. So I was like, oh, maybe I should make my own thing, my own company. And, and that's kind of where Oars and Paddles stemmed from um, because rowers are very particular. They are not paddles. Those are oars. So there's a the big distinction. So, yes. But now I, I do both and I love being in both worlds still, which is a lot of fun. That is neat. Um, we mentioned that I learned recently that one of the main differences is in rowing and crew. Mm-hmm. You are... Your back is facing, unlike Mm -hmm. all the others that are kind of lumped together where we're forward facing with a paddle. So that's, Mm -hmm. and as you said, it has an amazing history. It's been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, That's fun. I don't know that much about it, but I know Mm -hmm. actually a lot of swimmers and water polo players who got recruited in college Mm -hmm. because it isn't as strong in high schools unless you happen to have a team in your area, or maybe that's Mm -hmm. more out west. Um, Maybe there's Mm -hmm. a lot more on the east coast. So if you looked like you had like the shoulders and the strength, mm-hmm. they, they'd peg you if you're tall. Yep. Um, I guess there were certain things that were ad- advantageous. Unless you're the, what's the name of the person in the back? The oh, the coxswain. Yeah. Then yes. you're supposed to be lightweight, right? Light, light, and, boss, <laughs> light and bossy. <laughs> I love that. But yeah, but um, that, that's wonderful that you do the bo- them both. Yeah. I, um, I don't know that I've met anybody who, who balances those, those two types of coaching. Yeah. That's wonderful. And it, it's funny because when it's called an oar, when our mm-hmm. paddle is called an oar, mm-hmm. a lot of us uh, look like, what are you talking That's about? What but, it is. <laughs> but terminology is another thing in stand-up paddling. I definitely, mm-hmm. for instance, in teaching what you call the stroke, mm-hmm. um, I still hear differences based on whether you come from no water culture, a surf yeah. water culture, a um, um, kayak, because they definitely had different mm-hmm. termin- terminology for some of the same things. So. Um, It will be interesting to see. I'm excited for us to kind of own stand-up paddleboarding and really look at things like that and the teaching and the terminology. And another thing which came up, and I I did look up who, um, safety. You said you were were horrified that somebody thought you weren't a safe paddler, and you are, and it's very important to you. That's As a certified instructor, I know um, you you feel that way. And you did have a belt Mm -hmm. pack on. It just wasn't easy to see in that picture. Um, but that gentleman, Bob Pratt, is, is a great, I mean, he's just a hardcore um, advocate for everything safety. And one of the things that he, he really pushes, which I still think isn't talked about enough, is being a swimmer, mm-hmm. is being able to swim. I still oh, wow. think it's amazing that people get on stand-up paddle boards who don't know how to swim. Yeah. Either they weren't asked by the rental place or they often do not tell the truth, I understand, because they're in groups. Mm-hmm. But it's really important. It is... Um, I don't own a company. I haven't. But you need to know that yeah. they will be okay, especially mm-hmm. if you're not with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think swimming is another That's one a of good those, point. those issues. But I think we need to look at safety equipment, too, and, like, mm-hmm. really modifying the things that we've taken. Um, you know, in the United States, we mm-hmm. were designated as a vessel. 
mm -hmm. um, in 2008. So we immediately adopted everything that's kayak. Not that it's okay. good or bad. It's that's that's what how they decided to define us. Um, but that's that's the leash conversation wasn't even in the mm -hmm. picture for a long time. Mm. And we yeah. we talked briefly about that. That yeah. there's different types of leashes, but they can be sometimes the most important safety equipment depending on exactly. your situation. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank you. So that's does, um, tell me a little bit, Peace Up, I have, um, I know they've changed. It was actually Rob Casey got it mm -hmm. started in mm. uh, Washington, and mm -hmm. now it's a wonderful couple. Yeah, Julie and Kurt. I yeah. know, I, I need to make an excuse to, to do some professional development down there. I know, I'd love to go down and see where they are. Yeah, they're fantastic. <laughs> Once we travel again. Yeah, yeah. great people um, took it over. So do they have other levels past flat water? Yeah, so I think the cool thing about the PSUPA is they have flat water, they have the, um, the white water, you know, and there's, there's all kinds of different facets to it. It's not just one focus, which I think is, is really cool about that organization. Um, so that is, yeah. yeah, I think that's important. It's really important that stand up paddling. One of the beauties is that it's so versatile and it can mm -hmm. be used in so many different ways, but it, there really are differences to um, Absol yeah. teaching and training and safety mm -hmm. in the different different ways that we're using it yeah it's definitely yeah. but it still is very much um as much as you and i are in racing and there's these mm -hmm. niches that are like yeah. some new ones whitewater yeah. and yeah uh, new ones like foiling and winging foiling and, and yeah yeah and all the ways that we um put the human powered and nature powered together mm -hmm. which i think yeah. is really fun and fascinating um but there's still um a, a basic to it, it that mm -hmm makes it so accessible which i think is one of uh, the beautiful things that it's Absolutely. Um, if you have the right equipment i always throw that in mm -hmm. yeah. anybody can stand up paddleboard yeah we, you know Definitely. you can learn to do it some people are yeah. a little i was one of those that was a little bit Sometimes your head gets, I think, you know, you're on wobbly ground. I definitely had the shaky legs where some people oh, just stand okay. on it like no yeah. problem at all, just for a time or two. But I've, some of those I have seen the most challenge are the most athletic, like mm. big, like a football p player yeah. frame, tall guy who's, mm -hmm. who's used to muscling everything, you know, yes. and grips that paddle really tight and their feet are probably clenched on top of yeah. that. <laughs> I, hate, I hate drafting behind those guys because you're always like, whoa yeah there's some power there <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah have you had that's um so rowing for the Na naval academy i mean mm -hmm. i i hope that we can get stand-up paddling into um colleges and high schools cool. any thoughts on how i mean i didn't even talk to you about this but yeah, that, that, no. that just came up um since you've worked in the in our school system secondary and cool. collegiate yeah. yeah yeah i think you know especially at like an independent school um where i one of the school that I used to work out before I got here was the Gunston School in Centerville, Maryland. The campus was right on the water, and mm. we totally could have had paddle boards there. But then that would have been competing. You know, it's like, which one do I pick? So, yeah, um, there's some of yeah, that. I think, yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, and like you said, you know, you, you get the swimmers, you get the rowers, you get, you know, the, the track kids, the cross-country kids, and those would be a great pipeline for a stand-up paddle. And it's just a great community, and, and that would be really fun to see at the collegiate level. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's a great idea. Let's do it. Oh, let's do it. Cool. All right, I'll call the NCAA. We'll take care. Of <laughs> well, Nicole, it's so wonderful to hear about your what you've done, what you're doing right now yourself with racing. Thank you for introducing us to you. Uh, Chesapeake Lightcraft. Yes. Uh, CLC, and what a fun concept that you can actually make your own make standard your own. paddle board. Yeah. <laughs> Or boats of different types. Or boats, and, um, kayaks, yep. Just because we had a brief conversation about the fact that um, one positive out of this negative situation of this disease is that people are really finding exercise and finding the outdoors. Yeah. And I, I happen to live near a bike and hiking trail, and I have never seen so many people doing both of those yeah. things, especially just out walking and hiking. And that's going to be a real boon for, and it already is, actually mm -hmm. our stores, we're hearing anecdotally, are mm -hmm. really selling. Yeah. things and really yep. renting and people want to get outside and they want to get on the water. So um, I hope that's a big success for, for yeah. you too. But you mentioned that um, I think camping I read was going to be the number one outdoor activity because people are yeah. looking for how can I do something that's contained, that's safe, mm -hmm. that's maybe just mm -hmm. with my family, um, that you have an interesting kit that I would have never mm -hmm. thought would have come from you. What's that? So that's the teardrop camper. 
uh, that came so out cool. probably about four, four and a half years ago. And it's actually with, with us being a wooden boat kit company, it's our best selling kit. It um, is. Wow. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so people just go nuts over it. Um, we take, take it to shows and they just freak out and it, it's it, the cutest thing. So, yeah. Um, so I, I, I take rented, it. I rented one of those. You did. Oh, okay. Subaru. I got a, you know, nice. trailer hitch. Yeah. And, um, before we were thinking, but I think I told you, we ended up going the cargo van conversion mm -hmm. thing direction. So cool. yeah. Um, but those teardrops are so cool. And I love the idea of a wood one. Yeah. I'm gonna have yeah. to look up pictures of that. Actually, yes. We're going to post a picture in our Facebook yeah, group. Yeah, we could definitely do that. Yeah, yeah. Lo love so, to So, yeah, I'm hoping to take that. the teardrop. Um, there's a, a race in Vermont in a couple of weeks, and I'm hoping ah. to head up there because they're letting you camp on site, which is oh, pretty cool. Oh, that's yeah. really cool. So I saw that. I was like, perfect. So we'll just take the teardrop and do a road trip and be yeah. safe. Yes. But, uh, but it is interesting it. that, again, some of the races yeah. are actually happening, yeah. likely in California, but in places that yeah. are less populated. Actually, we... Still have some races on the book for Lake Tahoe, which is not as oh, cool. uh, urban as our coastal area in oh, okay. Southern California. Nice. But I, yeah, good. I don't think we're going to get any. Well, I hope oh, well. to get to meet you at yeah. um, if Carolina Cup or Chatter Jack yes. happen this That'd year. Awesome. If, if not in 2020 and 2021, yes. and it's been fantastic yeah. talking with you and Thank meeting you. Thank you so much. And, um, best of luck with what you're doing and continue to enjoy both the water and, and the wood watercraft. Thank you. You too. Take care. Okay. Take Thanks care. Thanks so much. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye -bye. And remember that this is recorded immediately if you want to tell someone about it. Um, it will be also on YouTube soon where all of these interviews are. And that we have a Facebook group called SupConnect Live Discussions, which you, we'd love you to join us there. And we'll put links to um, Chesapeake Lightcraft, to find Nicole's company, and some photos, too. Nice. Take care, everyone. Be safe. All right. Enjoy. Happy Thursday. Bye.